Can we get into the nitty gritty of DragCon in terms yes. of like, so are you paying for this booth? I'm just so curious about that aspect of it. Uh, <laughs> well, that's a long story, but no, not me. When I tell you the fights are fighting, AKA me against the whole house, but we'll see. Well, that's kind of what's going on right now with Elliot Two T's in that interview. I saw you drop some, some tweet about that too. Let's get into that. Listen, here's the thing. I'm, I'm outside, should just head inside, see what they say. Hi, I'm, I'm picking up wristbands. Okay, thank you. My wristbands were gifted to me by Devin, who owns Amped Accessories, a major accessory brand in the drag world that actually designs a crown and scepter for the winner of 10 of the drag race franchises around the world. How'd you think of this? I was buying jewelry and the service was not the greatest and also it was not accessible. Like, it's, it, it, there was just stuff missing. Yeah. So I was like, let's make it ourselves. So let's figure it out. Who's, who was the first drag queen to buy from you? Chanel was probably one of the first. Wow. So she's here this weekend wearing a lot of our stuff. So, so walk me through what you're doing, what the vibe is. Well, um, we have the iconic bird's nest recreated Obsessed. from the night of my uh, untimely demise. No. Uh, and I'm just, I'm nesting at the moment. Yeah. It's so creative. Thank you. And these all your friends just helping out or? Yes. I love it. I love that it's like a community situation. You know what I mean? Everyone's here helping each other out. It's so beautiful. Isn't it just? Yes. <laughs> and what are you selling? You're gonna sell shirts and stuff, or shirts, keychains, magnets, um, office supplies. This is your first drag con, right? Um, yes, my first ever. How do you feel? You know, um, I feel pussy. I feel as yes. I feel. Um, are you nervous? Nervous. No, never experienced that before. Really? No. Wow, look at it. Gorgeous. Congratulations. Thank you. What's the vibe? Oh, uh, we're going for like, you know, very like uh kind of like elegant garden, Latina, you know, very like just florals, flowers, roses. Just just elegant and clean, you know. How long did it take for you guys to make all this? Like to set it all well, up? The ring took about maybe an hour and a half and then we're gonna do the rest, which is probably gonna take another hour and a half. Or hopefully less. We have three people working. I'm just like supervising, you know. You're the supervisor. I get the nails dirty. Yeah. No, I'm yes, yes. <laughs> Congratulations! Oh my gosh, you have such a big booth. Thank you. <laughs> big brother moving on up. Good to see you. You look so skinny too. Thank you. This is my dad, by the way. Hi, Matt. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Are you nervous? How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm getting hot. It's hot in here. So it's exhausting. To see all the different artists at work, creating their storefront for the weekend, I just felt so lucky to be in that space before the madness happened. But before I knew it, it was officially day one at DragCon. With everything going on in politics right now, I've been trying really hard to stay up to date on the laws impacting our community and came across this story on Governor Whitmore signing a new law that bans gay and trans panic defenses in court. With ground news, I can quickly catch up on this story just by reading the bullet points. Like how this law prohibits justifying violence based on a victim's sex, gender, or sexual orientation, making Michigan the 20th state to outlaw this. These summaries are based on the 21 sources that ground news found on this with barely any coverage on the right. So if you only get your news from more conservative outlets, you might have missed this really important story. But Ground News actually has a blind spot feed dedicating to fixing this problem. It surfaces important news with little coverage coming from the left or the right. Like this story on new Olympics media guidelines banning harmful words describe trans athletes ahead of this year's game. Staying fully informed is what's really important to me. Whether it's the latest entertainment news or I'm diving into real world topics such as this year's election which is why I am so excited to be partnering with Ground News on this video. They gather related articles from around the world so we can compare coverage with important contexts. Contexts like news sources, political biases, credibility, and who owns them. LGBTQIA issues don't always make it to the mainstream media, so Ground News has become my go-to platform for keeping up with our news and other critical issues from every angle. I really think they make current events less confusing and overwhelming. And with their help, we can actually vote this year with a more a well-rounded understanding of what's actually going on in politics. So go to ground.news slash cullen or scan my QR code to save 40% off at the same vantage pin I'm using for unlimited access to all their features. By subscribing, you're not just supporting me, you're supporting an independent news platform aiming to help us truly understand the world we're living in. Thank you to Ground News for sponsoring this video and back to the interview. Are you off camera? Or you can we center camera? it? I'm on camera with you. Yeah. I need a little camera. 
right. I know, right? Look for that. Thank you for talking to me. I know you're like, it's Bianca Del Rio. No, so God, like, no. I just got in here. I have to get dressed. Please, I'm not that fancy. I'm in fluorescent lighting. <laughs> you're, you're, how am I going to be How am I gonna be a cunt? I'm in fluorescent lighting at DragCon. You honestly look great. Oh, I well, thank you. I didn't go out last night, so I'm smart. Eight yeah. in the morning. You look like this? I'm together. Well, you know, I've come to realize at an advanced age that you just can't party the night before you have to do this. And there's nothing worse than getting in drag hungover. There's nothing worse than standing in heels when you're hungover. So if I have the option, I will just definitely stay in for the night. And that's what I did. How many drag cons is this for you now? Uh, I think this is probably my third that I've done. Third I haven't three. done that many. Yeah, because it doesn't always work with my schedule. So this year it worked out because I have a little break in between touring and then I start up touring again in August. Because Bianca's booked. Uh, no, well, not necessarily that. It's just that my life doesn't revolve around it. But when it's free, when I'm free, I can come do it. So it Wait, worked out. Can we get into the nitty gritty of DragCon in terms yes. of like, so are you paying for this booth? I'm just so curious about that aspect of it. Uh, <laughs> well, that's a long story, but no, not me. But some queens are, some queens aren't. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a different situation. I don't know contracts or how it works for younger queens or for the newer seasons. I'm not sure if they're you know obligated to be here or if they're sponsored by a certain product or something. I mean, we're the OG queens, so it's a different setup for us back in the day. Notice some of the people, like friend of mine, Naomi, Ka um, Naomi Campbell, Naomi Smalls was with the Betsy Johnson booth, so basically she was a guest with them. So I think it's whatever works for the people, but it's not it's not a cheap endeavor, I must say. And the goal is to sell a bunch of merch here, right? Sure, of course, and to meet people and take photos. Yeah, it's like a huge meet and greet. I love it. You were, here, were you here yesterday or not? Uh, no, I wasn't here yesterday. I was filming something yesterday, but I'm here all day today. I'll be here all day today, too. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Anytime. I love awesome. This. Thank Great you so much. Thank Good you. to see you. It's like I know you. Because yeah. you come in today. Yes. I know, that, I know that feeling. Because the YouTubers I watch, I get like the same way. I feel like I can't come to DragCon and not do a walk on the pink carpet. So I can't here wait I go. I Ready? Up. I'm nervous. Here we go. See all the faces hey. that on me. Do you have a little spin? Hey. Hey. That was fun, actually. I, I feel liberated. I blow up, blast, bloom, explosion. In my late twenties, trying to get the circle rolling. I'm working all these others, jumping hard to oh spin. I love you. I love the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for the work that you love. Your channel. Don't be <laughs> <laughs> it's so interesting to see how like every queen has a different line. Like it's you know some queens don't have much of a line. Some queens have a huge line. That would honestly make me nervous if I was a drag queen, like coming to DragCon, because it's very like comparison, like one booth next to the next booth, one, you know what I mean? It's like a long line on one booth and the next booth there's no lines, which would make me really nervous is like, I don't want to make me nervous. Hi, I'm Matt. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Uh, uh, nice to meet Huge you. Huge fan of yours. Oh, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. We're here at DragCon 2024 in LA. I'm so excited to be here. Is this your second year here or what? It's my third. Third time's the charm. I also love the Willy Wonka vibe because it's Glasgow, everything. It makes, I mean, that Glasgow Wonka experience was so embarrassing and cringe. I have to reclaim it and try and do something that represents Glasgow a little bit better. I'm obsessed Just with that. a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, so as a drag queen, be honest here. Does it make you nervous to have a booth? Because it's like, I would be nervous that no one would come to my booth. I get nervous about that, but then... It's six and a half a dozen, like, if people, loads of people come to your booth, you're never going to get a break, you're going to be really tired, your voice is going to go. If no one comes to your booth, you may be out of pocket, but guess what, your feet aren't sore, and you still have a voice. There we go. So, there's something to take away from it, whether you're busy or not busy. So what's your name? Uh, James Robinson, uh, known as the hashtag tattooed superfan. I mean, you have got to be the number one fan. Yes, absolutely. I have season one through 16 and I have every franchise of Drag Race tattooed on my whole body. What do you love so much about Drag Race? I love drag. I used to do drag. Um, it was one of my, mine and my mother's favorite shows. To me, I'm an introvert extrovert. So, and the other reason why I started it, because it's a conversation starter and it really gets me talking and like, because I really don't go up to people and talk to people, so it's a really good conversation piece. So you were saying that it reminds you of your mom. Yes. Can we talk about that at all? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my mom, she was my best friend. I, I probably get a little emotional, but she was my best friend. Uh, I loved her to death. We loved Drag Race to death. We would call each other and like talk about the episodes and stuff like that. So, um, But I did lose her to about two years ago. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, it, it's a little hard, but... Um, I, it just reminds me of her so much. And my goal, and it was our goal, I would love to be on the show as a super fan, and I know she would be ecstatic if it ever happens. So that's yeah, beautiful. That would be amazing. Do you feel her presence when you're here? Absolutely. I, absolutely, she's with me. That's really beautiful. I, I have chills. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it just, I love her enough. Yeah. What's her name? Her name is Linda. 
Linda, what we're thinking of you, Linda. You're here with us in spirit. Yes, absolutely. So I love her to death. I love you, Mom. Okay, we found the girlfriend experience. Let's bombard after these pictures. Cassie, how do you feel fast? Sorry. Oh my god. Yes, sir. You're so gorgeous. Oh my gosh. We need to do an episode together, but how are you feeling? Yes, I'm feeling amazing. It's been so cool, this whole experience. You got your handlers here trying to rush you away. I love it. This is Matt. This is Matt. I'm obsessed with this content. I've walked by your booth so many times, you're never there. Yesterday, we had Bring Back My Girls so much, I just finished my performance. But I'm going to be there for the next, like, five hours. Are you having fun here? I'm having such a good time. Like, just being in a room with so many iconic people, I'm like, gag, am I, like, with all of you bitches? I feel like you really are. Like, you, because you're so hot and stuff. Like, you're a, you're a star. Ah, thank you. Well, you know what? I make with I make work with what I paid for. You're such an icon. Thank you for talking to me. I know Thanks you're busy. So I'm much. sorry. No, I love you. I've been wanting to meet you forever. Same, ah! same. Do you have a booth here? Because I was wondering. No. No, I'm just I, I want I want to I want to be entertained. I love drag. I'm not here to work, girl. You can find us at Sephora. Well, I want to say congratulations on YouTube because like you are such an inspiration for people in our community, oh, and you've done you. so many amazing things, leveraging your YouTube career, which is really like the goal that I have with my YouTube channel is to try to take it to the next level. And yes. you've really done the damn thing. Eleven years. I've been on YouTube for eleven years, and I've learned so much about business, about being commercial yet disruptive. It's also like, I feel like my issue with YouTube is always the stress of views, views, views. So like finding something else. It's not about views, baby. It's not about views. No matter how big you are, no matter how much money you make, if you f with the people that f with you and you build a community, because I, I've lost views to be honest, but I have the fastest growing brand in the U.S. Well, that's what I was going to say. And like, and, and I wasn't going to say that obviously, but you know, I love that you've it's built obvious, bitch. like, like you ain't watching Patrick star on YouTube. I'm old. I am vlogging now. So but they're buying the makeup, which the is what we need. The viewer is Joella watching my vlogs. But that's the thing. We have to personify product. When the views start to dip, does it, did, it, did it stress you out at that time in your life? And you of course. Of course. Yeah. This is me like asking as a YouTuber. You know what I mean? No, but, but I, I think as an entrepreneur, you're going to learn how to do marketing. You're going to learn how to like leverage. You said leverage. Leverage your views to become worth licensing. And then licensing can, can turn into equity in the market. And that's what I did. I started with views, partnerships, endorsements. Then I did my Mac licensing partnership for a whole year. And then I turned that into something that I actually own myself, which is One Size Beauty. It's, it's hot. That's why we're flashing, honestly. Is, is this hot? God, it is m super sweaty. I'm a sweaty, sweaty boy right now. <laughs> it looks good, though. It's worth it. You look gorgeous. We have so much knowledge these days towards drag queens and... You know, we see drag queens everywhere, but we really don't see drag kings as much. That's right. Yeah. I mean, the most that we've seen from a up and coming mainstream one would be Dragula. Uh, but, you know, this is drag con, honey. This is RuPaul's drag con. We haven't seen that type of jump yet. I hope that anybody who is a drag king and is also watching this doesn't necessarily feel defeated uh, about things. I think there's a huge almost like argument when it does come to the the whole thing with drag race and you know are are they on are they not are they banned are they blacklisted you know we don't really have the answers to it yet drag kings blacklisted from rupaul's drag race is what you're thinking there's there's been a lot of discussions i've seen about that where people think that it's a possibility that um there's no like they won't even look at your tape or things of that sort there's all these different rumors and there hasn't been anything directly spoken about from RuPaul or from production, you know, confirming, denying anything, we, but we just haven't seen any, you know, Drag King on there. But I do think that sometimes allowing like the negativity to fester when you don't know the answers yet to something will only like take away from yourself. Obsessed with your look. Hey, I know you. Do you? Yes. Come interview me when I'm famous. You already are famous. Look at you. Period. Period. My daddy got me a carpet, moving carpet. I was thinking we could sing the song, you know? Unbelievable sights. Indescribable feeling. I, I noticed you from, from miles away. You're gorgeous. Stunning. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. So I started my transition in 2020 when the pandemic hit. I was terrified. Um, I, I, I didn't know how to... I worked at the airport. And I had, knowing that I was in a transition, I needed to keep my job. And I had cut my hair, buzz cut, and I had my hair up to here. And at the time, my hair was very important. Funny enough, now I love my hair short. I love it short, too. It's, it's so feminine on you. You know, it's so interesting. I never felt as feminine as I do now until I cut it all off and I could see my face. But it took some 
adjusting to features and things for me to feel comfortable within that. But now it's like I cut it all off and I used to hide behind my hair, but now I want to be seen. Seeing your show on YouTube really connected with me, especially the latest episode with Gia Gunn, where she said that sometimes during our transition, you kind of want to run away. In order to find the woman in you, you run away from your own community. But in the end, you come back. Now I am like, no, this is me. Every day is a celebration because that's like angina because life is a celebration. I have to say, I think you were the first drag queen on my channel. So thank you so much for opening those doors for me. Thank you very much. The Candy Muse, the official. How are you, baby? How was Villains? Um, it's fucking insane. It comes out this fall. I cannot wait for everyone to see it. When I tell you the fights are fighting, AKA me against the whole house, but we'll see. <laughs> well, that's kind of what's going on right now with Elliot Two T's in that interview. I saw you drop some some tweet about that too. Let's get into that. Listen, here's the thing. It's been three years. It's actually been four years since we filmed season 13. Uh, it's been three years since we aired. Everything that happened then, I've spoken about already on interviews. I've given people the chance, the opportunity to speak up and apologize and they have it. And three years later, you want to come and do an interview and talk about, oh, woe is me without Still taking accountability, bitch, hold on. I had the receipts, don't try to play me. Because one thing is, I am not a liar. So, here are the receipts. You were given the opportunity to speak up and you did it. So, whatever, bitch, don't care. Did you watch a full interview? I had to because I was like, I have to sit here and, and see what this person is saying. Um, because it, it, playing the, the, the what was me cards is a very dangerous game, especially in our climate. Everyone has an opportunity and a chance to learn and grow. And I, I would never take the opportunity away from Elliot to be able to do so, but four years later, she still has it, so girl, f you. <laughs> bitch, you know me, I don't care. I, bitch, I, I'm gonna tell you whatever I feel. That's why I love Candy Muse. Hello, that's what everyone does. <laughs> Thank you so much. My weekend at DragCon was coming to a close and I was so tired, but it was so much fun. And you know, when I left and thought about my experience, of course, I thought about how cool it was to see the drag queens and see all the famous drag queens and see RuPaul DJing and stuff, but I think what resonated with me most was seeing the fans of RuPaul's Drag Race. It was a convention center full of people from all over the world that had traveled there for that weekend and were in such good moods and so happy and celebrating and rejoicing, especially for those of you who came up to me at DragCon and just said hi and gave me a hug and said how much my content means to you. You have no idea how much that makes my entire day. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. I know it's a bit different than what I normally do with my series, but you know, I got this opportunity from Devin. Thank you, Devin, if you're watching. I just felt like I want to take my cameras with me and have you experience it too. You know, that's been one of the best things about the series for me in particular is is the experiences that I get to experience because of this show. I think that's all. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you're subscribed to my channel and I will see you very, very soon. Okay, bye.